All right, we're gonna try this again. Uh, internet went down, so I changed my shirt to. Uh... <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna have to do something about that because it's not the first time that's happened. Um, so of course now I don't remember what the hell we were talking about, uh, but and that I'm gonna lose the chat. So I gotta I gotta fly through this chat now, and of course there's nobody in here to listen to it. Um, but I guess you guys can do the replay or something. Uh, Nirvana, uh, Newbie Gone Wild is asking about Nirvana and its firmware. I don't know a thing about Nirvana, uh, but look up, uh, uh, Kevin Doherty, Stinger Swarm's channel. Uh, he's been using the Nirvana for a while. Uh, he probably has some good info. Uh, Supercell is doing a race build, 300 grams, no battery, 470 with a battery. That's a awesome weight. Trying to get it to 280, holy cow. Um, how do I get a copy of your dump for the brat on 4.1? Asks Supercell. Uh, Supercell, message me on. I think you're a patron. Message me on Patreon, and I'll actually make a Patreon post for it. Um, now's actually the perfect time for that because I haven't gone ham on the tune yet. Um, I don't. I don't want to post a dump of like a ham tune uh, and have you guys burning motors. Uh, Supercell says it dropped again. Supercell, I hope you mean. It dropped a second ago because I was on my phone. Hopefully, I'm still good. The, I'm still green on OBS, so we should be. I should be good here. Um, uh, let me keep ripping through these comments here. Uh, Mars FPV drones. Is it possible to build a toothpick with an HB cam and battery to weigh under 100 grams? I don't think so. Kebab's been working on it. I've been talking to him about it for months. Um, he's thinking 110 is going to be the least possible weight. Um, uh, so stay tuned for that. He's working on that really hard, and I'm going to start to build a toothpick uh, with the um, with the Cadex or the Runcam. Fuck, what's it called? Runcam. Uh, I don't know. Runcam has a, a an HD cam with built-in FPV feed. Uh, that's that weirdo shape. 20 to 26 by 26, I guess it is, of the um, the whoop boards. I'm going to build that double stack whoop board and then uh, that thing. See how that is. Uh, good question, though. Uh, CN Brit says it takes a lot of time to do what you guys do. Uh, big thanks to you guys. Thank you, man. Thanks for recognizing that. That's what one of the many things that makes it well worth it. Um, FPV Geek is in the house. I have not tried the digital uh, DJI system yet, Ron. Um, thanks for swinging by, though. Third time's a charm, Budget FPV says. Uh, all right, let me try to get through the rest of these chats before it goes away on me. Uh, Jason Peters d says, do you have a balance frame? Great for most flying stuff. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, the glide. The, the glide, if you're asking about 5-inch, for sure it's the glide frame. Um, if you're asking about micros, it would be this. It would be the CB3, uh, which Rotorius does have back in stock now. It's, it's not the... Uh, the newer version that we're going to release hopefully by the end of the year, uh, but this current version, which is awesome. Um, it's not this exact one here. It's going to be this one, which is even better because it's got uh, removable arms. Um, so for a micro, this is it for me. This is uh, the one, one frame to rule them all uh, frame. This can do freestyle. It can do racing. Um, it's the right weight. Uh, it's the right size. The Acrobrat is freestyle specific. You would never race um, uh, with an Acrobrat, uh, but you could absolutely race with this. CB, uh, it, you know, it, this is called the CB3, three for three inch props, but the CB stands for Crybaby because that's what all the other racers would do in England um, where Rotorius is, uh, uh, is located. That's what all the five inch racers would become when, the guy, when Team White Goat uh, would show up with CB3s and whoop their asses. All the five-inch guys would become crybabies. So that's where this thing got its name. That's where the CB came from. A little inside baseball for you guys. Um, uh, Budget FPV made an order already. Wanted to make another order. Need props for the Zing 1507s. Ordered two down and one to go. Awesome. Budget FPV and anybody else who's interested in the Zing motors, um, I have an affiliate link to them. I'm also, I forgot that I got set up on Banggood um, as, as to, to do the affiliate thing, uh, where are they? There they are. There it is. Oh no, I have the Amazon. Oh, right. Because Banggood is out of stock right now. 
Um, the, the Zing motors are cheapest. The other thing I like about this is I'm doing some price shopping for you guys. Um, when I do these affiliate links, and I'm going to check on them every so often, uh, I'm grabbing the affiliate link uh, between Banggood and Amazon that has the best value. Um, Banggood, I, I understand it's going to take them longer to get them to you. So like if, if, the, if the item on Amazon is like a dollar or two more, I'm going to pick the Amazon link because I think we can all agree it's worth a dollar or two to have something in two days rather than two and a half, three weeks. Um, so yeah, with, with the affiliate links, I'm going to try to keep up with them um, so that uh, you guys are getting the best price with the, uh, with the affiliate link. And uh, yeah, there it is. There's my affiliate link to the... Uh, to the Zing 1507s. I'm more, more than anything else right now, I'm interested in like just how the whole thing works. Um, I think it's pretty slick. Uh, so there we go. Let's come back over here and all right. Bradley Parsons, remembering Project Blue Falcon, pours some OJ, OJ on the carpet. Roger that, planning BF 4.1 and the 3AF before I scrapped the motors. Yeah, Project Blue Falcon is the other, uh, is one of the other folks who just gave so much of his own time for the good of the whole community. Um, I, I did that a lot with in, in motorsports after a couple of years of being into it. I got, um, but it, it, for me, once I've been into a hobby for a few years, I get kind of good enough at it, I guess you could say, where um, I don't have to spend so much time researching it and learning all the technical shit. I already know all that stuff. So like some time frees up to volunteer more. Um, and I love volunteering. The, the people in my life that I have met while volunteering have been the, the, a lot of the lifelong friends that I have. Because if you're willing to go volunteer your time for some other cause, you're a fucking awesome person. And that's the type of person that I want, I want in my circle um, of friends. Um, so if you don't volunteer a lot, do it because it's awesome. Um, and you can usually, so one of the most fun things I did with volunteering was photography. Um, I would volunteer at like, uh, local animal hospitals, uh, who had a lot of animals that needed to be adopted. So I would get really good, clean images of these cats and dogs so that, you know, cause those places don't have an in-house photographer cause we're expensive. Um, so they'll just take their iPhone and they'll stand up and point it down through the chain link fence at the dog. And you can't even see the damn dog. Um, and they just look pathetic. Whereas, you know, if I put them in front of a couple speed lights and, you know, a half decent background, um, with some out of focus blur, it's, oh my God, you know, that dog looks awesome. I need it. Um, so you can usually, um, what I'm trying to get at is you can usually take your passions and do volunteer work with them. What we're doing here with FPV is a perfect example of that. Offer to fly around somebody's real estate listing or somebody's business, um, to make a slick little edit for them. Um, and what'll happen if you continue to do that a lot of times with volunteer work is it'll turn into money. Um, you'll volunteer for a while. That gives you an opportunity to do, um, free, uh, free practice. And then you're going to get better and better and better. And you're going to get tied in with these people that might have a couple bucks for you. You know, you fly around somebody's business for fun, show them a little 30 second edit. It blows up on their Facebook. They're going to come back to you and say, Hey, can you do it for me again? And at that point you can say, I sure can, but it's going to cost you 100 bucks an hour, uh, 50 bucks an hour, whatever your whatever your personal rate is. Um, so yeah, volunteer, it's awesome, and you meet the coolest people. Uh, all right, almost done with the old chat. Uh, same here. Stream dropped, stream dropped, stream dropped. Gone to the wind. Get it back on. Man, the stream. I was talking for a while when the stream was dropped. God damn it! I, I don't remember what I was talking about because I got so angry uh, when it dropped. Okay, uh, old chat is going away. New chat is coming up here. Let's pop the chat out. Let's get it over here. Let's make the window nice and tall. And let's change it from top chat to live chat. All right, cool. So we went from 50 or 60 watching down to 13. Awesome. Thanks, Comcast, you fucking steaming piles of asshole. You Piece of shit, bastard, motherfuckers. Um, Luke Beal, Supercell made it. Budget made it. Mars made it. <laughs> uh, Jason Peters is here. Kevin Spaceman is here. Uh, or no, not Kevin. Ken Spaceman is here. That's a great... Is that your real last name, Ken? I fucking love it if it is. Um, it reminds me of Dr. Spachemin from... Um, from, not Parks and Rec, from uh, 30 Rock. Dr. Spaceman. 
Um, his name was Dr. Spachemin, but uh, Tracy Jordan would call him Dr. Spaceman. <laughs> um, all right. Budget ordered uh, the Zing Motors. Awesome. You're going to love them, man. Uh, Bugger Mars, Bugger missed his answer to my question. Okay, Mars, so I, I was probably talking for 10 minutes and answering your question. So ask ask your, your question again, and I'll answer it again. <laughs> yeah, Mars, for sure. For anybody that's in here, for the 14 whole people that are in here, if I miss your question, for sure, spam it. Um, basically, here, let me show you. So here's my setup. Um, I have this window... I have the chat window. I pop the chat out, um, and then I make it nice and tall here, like you can see. Um, so basically, if your comment goes all the way off the top of my popped out chat, it's pretty much gone. I, I'm not going to scroll up to get it. At some point here, I'll have um, I'll, I'll have enough watch hours to set up the um, the thing where you can pay a dollar for a special message or whatever. Um, and that puts those into a separate spot to, to make the, the important questions easier for me to get to. Um, but yeah, until that point, just ask it again if, if you think it fell off my uh, this height of chat that I have going. Um, all right. <clears throat> Fair warning, I'm going to cut this in... i got to do at least a little bit of editing for you guys. Maybe not. Um, I have to cut this off because I stream. I accidentally streamed for four hours last night, like two hours the night before. I'm gonna lose my voice um, if I'm not careful. I can already kind of feel it. Um, so I am gonna end this at less than four hours. But let's get into Mars's question. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The toothpick question. Great question. Um, is it possible to build a toothpick with an HD cam battery weigh under 100 grams? I don't think so. Kebab's working on it. Um, I've been talking to him about it a lot because uh, that's what I'm looking forward to. I, I'm, a, I'm at a point now where I'm just not going to fly something that doesn't have HD. Um, it's so it's, – it's not expensive. It's easy to build them with it now, um, and it's just slick. But uh, uh, Bob thinks it's going to be 110. He thinks that's going to be the all-up weight to, to get a toothpick with HD. Um and I'm going to give it a shot. I have a, a, a new uh, Rotorious frame called the Wemix, which is a nod to the Remix. Um, this is an underslung frame. The motors are going to point up in this direction. And the battery is going to be here. battery is going to sit like this. Um, so it's going to fly like that. And the camera is going to be down here looking up. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to try to, I, I'm going to build this with uh, a whoop board in here and then uh, the run cam, run cam makes a uh, uh, split HD camera with the FPV feed built in uh, that is that wacky 26 by 26 or whatever the hell it is dimension of the, um, uh, of the whoop boards. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to run the whoop board and then that, and then I, I'll probably run a, a receiver somewhere in here, maybe back here. Um, fitting a VTX is going to be a real bastard on this. Hmm. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I don't know where I'm going to put a, uh, a VTX on this, but, uh, super chat. That's what it's called. Yeah. My watch hours are almost, actually, let's look, let's check the, um, every stream. I try to check the watch hours with you guys. Let's see where we're at. We're getting close. 3668 into this reload already. Might have to do that to reload it. Now it looks like we're at thirty six sixty eight. So we're almost we're almost there. We just got to get to four thousand, um, and I'm hoping that this stream and then tomorrow's stream uh, will get me there. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, yeah, there's your Siati uh, watch hour update for the stream. Um, yeah, great question. I can't wait for the to to get this built. This will be super cool. Um, haven't quite decided on motors yet. Uh, but we'll get there. I, I, I have to buy everything for this. This is also 14 by 14. Um, so I literally have to... The only thing I think I have for this is an RXSR. Um, I, I'm... Yeah. I'm going to have to find a really small VTX for this. But hopefully I can get that to that 110 number. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, right? If... <laughs> 
if Comcast weren't such a pile of steaming shit fucks, maybe I'd be there already. <laughs> um, I saw another big chunk of text, which is probably a good question. Uh, oh, here we go. A.R. Dyers asks, uh, what's a budget micro cam? Seeing a lot of good reviews on the Run Cam 2. Uh, I am a big fan of the Run Cam Racer 2. This is the same thing as, um, this is the same internals as the camera that I have on my Acrobrat, which is the Sparrow. Um, it is, it's a, it's a camera that basically with this 1.8 millimeter lens and the, the 160 degree field of view, um, it's the closest little tiny lightweight five gram micro cam, um, that imitates my, um, five inch camera setup which is a micro eagle with an rc25 g lens for a little bit of extra field of view um, so that's my uh preferred little tiny cheap micro cam right now is the um the racer 2 which is over here on the other monitor oh i have it the other monitor up and you can get it in black i like that about it too um but uh yeah uh the the 2.1 i just noticed i actually have the the uh, the 2.1 millimeter lens on mine, so I'm actually only at 145 degree field of view, um, so I need to swap this lens out to a 1.8. Um, interesting. I swapped this lens at some point um, from the stock. I, I I banged up the stock lens, and I switched the lens out, and I didn't realize that I switched it out to a 2.1. Um, so this rig will become even more comfortable for me to fly once I get a 1.8 in there with that 160 field of view. So that's interesting. Um, Although, hold on, let me let me check something. Sparrow 2 Micro. Maybe that Sparrow was different. Let's see. Um, it might be hard to find it because it's discontinued. Um, I think they discontinued it because, as you can see on the front here, the, the physical body, like the case of the camera, which is this purple, is like the most minimal thing ever. Um, and go figure, it's very weak. Um, the, the racer, the run cam racer, it has the same board, the same everything, uh, but in a full case that's actually strong. Um, let's see. 2.1 millimeter. Yeah. So it, see, they went from like 4.5 grams to five grams. That is well worth it. Um, that doesn't tell me the field of view though. Let me see if I can find any micro. Oh, here, get FPV. I'll have it. They have a good amount of specs. Yes. Here we go. Uh, where does it call out the field of view? Come on, give it to me. Okay, so the Sparrow had, uh, I'm willing to bet that the Sparrow has a different distance between the lens and the, um, uh, and the sensor in there. Um, so even with this 2.1 millimeter lens, I've got 150 field of view, um, with this Sparrow, which is why I'm so comfortable flying with it. 160 on the on the micro eagle with the RC 25G lens versus 150, that's close enough. 140 to 160, that throws me off. Um, but yeah, you'll never be able to find one of these Sparrow twos again, which is a good thing. Get the Racer two and get the 1.8 lens, um, and you'll be golden. Cool. Um, on the on Bardwell's stream, he asked me to put, and I threw the link up there, but um, I don't think he saw it. Uh, for anybody else that's curious. He asked me to, to put up a video of me driving the Miata. Um, so here you guys go. I'll play this really quick. Ah, shit. The music is going to... I don't care. We're fine. Oh, I know what I can do. Here you go.
That is autocross, my friends. Why is the zoom light coming in so hot? Oh, because the, uh... Sorry about that, I think I just blew your guys' ears up. My apologies. Um, yeah, Ernie was my, uh, my wife Kristen nicknamed the car Bert. And, uh, so I had Ernie as my, um... It was basically a G-meter. I would, I would look at my footage after the event, and basically what... Ideally, what you're trying to do is you come in as fast as you can to a braking zone. You stand on the brake, so I would want I would look for Ernie to move to swing forward, and then as you release the brakes, you start adding uh, steering in. So what I would try to do is put Ernie forward and then slowly rotate. No, I'm too close. I would try to swing him forward and then slowly rotate him around to the side mid corner. You want him as as far to the side like this as you can, and then as I get on the throttle to exit the corner, I would try to swing him right around back. Anybody who is a um, anybody who has watched um, Initial D will might recognize that from uh, the the water in a cup. The other way to visualize that is water in a cup. You want to try to run the water on the rim of the cup. If you just stand on the brakes, you'll just shock the water and it'll spill out the front. Um, but if you if you get on the brakes and turn in, the water will move forward in the cup and then you can roll it around the side. And then with the throttle, you roll it around the back, and the water just goes in a circle rather than just shooting right up the front. Um, I used a, a Sesame Street character to do it, <laughs> which also kept me from getting all wet. Um, so, all right, let's get back to full screen here. I think I'm pretty much caught up on chat, which is awesome. Um, uh, it's a 99 Supercell, uh, first year of the um, NB. Uh, oh, you had a 91. Very cool. Yeah, uh, Miata is the car in this country that everybody should own um, at some point in their life. If you have any interest in cars, owning a Miata will completely change your your understanding of what four wheels, seats, and a steering wheel can do. Um, a car that weighs 2,100 pounds is so different from anything you've ever driven it's not even funny um and they're so goddamn cheap you can pick up a miata for like three grand um which is in, incidentally less than what you can buy a golf cart for um and uh you can drive a miata on the street to work and stuff so yeah everybody buy a miata at some point in your life you can thank me later um <laughs> supercell says it's funny when you be beat a v8 in miata it's funny when you beat everything in a miata <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, what was today was supposed to be editing? Let's uh, let's edit something uh, now that I'm caught up on the stream. Um, oh shit! Yeah, I need to get this video up for uh, T Motor. Damn it! Um, no shit, Noah. Are you kidding me? Noah used to work at Mazda as a mechanic. I had no idea. That's fucking awesome, man. Righteous. Um, so this is an edit that um, Vivian asked me to put together. Uh, for their for T Motors 1507s. Oh wait, was there another? There was another question. Ken Spaceman, uh, Ken Spachemin asked me something, uh, and I think it's the third time he's asked. Midnight here in Finland already. Ken, I hope you're still in here. Um, sorry that I missed your comment. It looks three times. Looks like three times. Um, sorry to make you stay up all fucking night. Um, but better late than never. Uh, will this combo work? Ishin Sinican. Plug and play. I think I know which one that is. Um, external RXSR, FR Sky X9D 2019. Will the RX just plug into the Crazy BF4? Oh, definitely not. No, you're going to have to solder it for sure. Um, you probably will even want to depin that RXSR. Um, because you want to save the weight. Technically not, but for certain you're going to have to solder to that um, to that bo uh, whoop board that's in there. I, I can guarantee you that there's not the plug header that the RXSR needs. But I would think that you can get, you probably already have the Ishin Cinecan, but um, I would think that you can get a Cinecan set up for FR Sky. Maybe that's one of those boards where when they do it for FR Sky, it's built into the board itself and you get shit range. Um, but, yeah, so that's the answer to your question. Absolutely, you're going to have to solder um, three or either three or four wires up to that board. S-Bus, 
um, telemetry if it has it and if you want it, um, five volts and ground. Um, so there you go. Uh, drop the answer with grams, 11.05 on two and a half inch. Oh, here we go, puffy. Uh, 11.05 on two and a half inch, 130 grams all up weight. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, you'll be fine on those 1105s. If you start to get up to like, I mean, if you want more power uh, and more control, or if for some reason your weight creeps up, you go to a, a heavier duty frame, if you get to like 150, 160 grams all up, um, that's when I would say bail on those 1105s and go to like a 1304 um, or maybe even a 1404. I, I prefer the 1304s though. Um, but yeah, your current setup about 135 all up, those 1105s are are probably about as good as it's going to get. Um, it would probably be a, a fairly small performance improvement going up to a, a 1304. But I will say this, those 1105s are 6 grams a motor. Uh, the 1304s are only 7 grams a motor. So there's not much of a weight penalty going up to the 1304s, and there's going to be um, a big improvement in having those extra 2 millimeters of stator width to control those 2.5 inch props. Um, but again, all that being said, those 1105 Zing motors are probably pretty damn good with your current setup. Uh, yeah, so the, these T-Motor 1507 Protos that I've got, the production versions of these are what's going in that FPV crate. Um, so they'll be these same motors, but in, uh, 3800 KV. Um, and they're going to be great. They're, they're, they really are going to be great. Um, uh, but... Like I've talked about, I do like the Zings a little bit better. Let's do some editing. Um, again, this is an edit that Vivian um, from T-Motor asked me to put together. Um, now that they announced the motor, they kind of had like a, a, you know, like they always do with prototype stuff. They have like an embargo on media. They don't want you blasting it out. Um, uh, Blackbird did by accident, um, but it wasn't like just a video about this motor. It was one of his edits that he just happened to include some... Uh, video from a Cinewoop. So that's that's the one that Vivian's been linking a lot um, is to Blackbird's video. Um, but you got to really look because there's only certain uh, clips in his edit that are from the uh, the Cinewoop that he had these motors on. Um, so there you go. My edit is going to be different because it's the whole damn thing and it's all from the Acrobat and it's all with those motors. Here's where I'm at. Oh, the, the fucking music dropped. Why did the... Uh why did I lose the music? Oh, because I probably moved it. Uh, what was the name of the song that I had in here? Here, let me fix this, and I'll show you guys where I'm at. Two Fingers is the name of the song, so we need to locate it. Uh, how do you do that? All right. Link Media, that's how you do it. So I need to find this. I need to locate it. I probably moved it to the uh, music folder that I just created on the desktop. Why is this so small? All right, let's see. Music way. Uh, yep, sure enough, I moved it. All right, so now that's relinked. Here's where we're at. Uh, I wonder if this will play. Let me close some windows down. Premiere usually has a hard time uh, playing smoothly. Let me get the uh, get onto the proxies here, get the quality turned down a little bit. Let's see what happens. This song fucking bangs. Look at that. Mmm, tasty. I've been trying to pull that off for months. And I think this is pretty much unedited now. Yeah, it is.
Yeah, I gotta clean this up. Oh wow, this is very unedited. What? I thought I did work beyond that. What the shit? I had a situation with Premiere the other day where it deleted a whole... Oh, here's the rest of it. Okay. I was going to say, I thought I did more than that. All right, let me pull these in. Come on. It's playing nice and smooth. That's nice. <laughs> I did, house block. <laughs> so nothing's going to be synced up yet anymore, but... With the music, at least, but... Sync is actually not bad. That was one of the few days that I had my car back. I just playing like shit all of a sudden. happens to me all the time house block <laughs> if any of you guys are wondering where like 90 percent of the of the office parks that um steel kevin schizo and all the other tidwell mike mike and all those guys fly i can i can see them here i can i can call out at least 10 spots right in this that like you know you guys have seen Rotoriot and just edits from these guys from um it's all right here i live like right in the middle of alpharetta where all these alf uh, um office parks are like for example um so it's a whole bunch of them are actually down this way uh the the double red buildings uh, the crane is out here somewhere. That tree tunnel that Kevin went down at a million miles an hour is over here. Um, these buildings up here on the top of the hill, those guys have ripped a bunch of times. It's it's just ridiculous. Yep, empty on the weekends. Look at that float. Look at that power that these motors have. I'm off throttle. That's just a little throttle blip. Look at this. Ready? Throttle blip. Oh, no. Here it goes. Throttle blip off the throttle. Look how long it carries upwards. These motors make big power. Too much. It's too much power. But it's fun. Too much power is fun, but it, it makes flying that rig harder. Literally. Because you've lost throttle resolution. <laughs> yeah, this all needs to get edited. This is now just raw, dumped-in clips. See, you can see there, there's me struggling with it being too much power. It's like, every time you see me banging into stuff like that, banging into the top of stuff, that's because the motors have too much power. They have more power than, I, than, than what I want, than what I expect. So yeah, I gotta finish this up. Um, I do want to give you guys something cool though. I forgot about this day of flying, and my goodness, was I on fire! Um, let me just pick a song real quick. But uh, I wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek of this. This is gonna be a. Uh, I'm actually tempted to just edit this now. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna edit this now because this is gonna be a one battery edit. Um, 
so and and I really want to show you guys color correction. Um, so let's save this, and I'm gonna make a new project real quick here. And like I said, it's gonna be this one battery edit. So let's. Uh, this, I can also show you guys how to do proxies. Anybody that's on Premiere, um, uh, if you've got a computer that not necessarily struggles, but um, you know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, a not super powerful computer for editing, uh, doing proxies are, are going to change your life. So when you start a new project, you're going to um, you're going to go here to new project and give it a quick name. So this is going to be one battery school. Um, choose your location folder. For some reason, it refuses to stick with beta. Uh, and then you go over here to ingest settings. Um, the the that is a V1 Runcam Micro. Um, you go over here to ingest settings. You turn on ingest, and then you change it from copy to create proxies. And that's all you have to do. Ingest settings. Turn on the ingest click box. It's ingesting the video um, in order to create a proxy. And what a proxy is is a lower um, a, a lower quality version of the footage so that it's easier for it to, to edit and then at the end when you um, uh, when you export it that's when it uses the actual footage um, so that's it ingest settings ingest create proxies and click OK and now now that you've done that every single clip that you pull into your project uh, it's gonna automatically launch uh, Adobe Media Player and create a proxy for it so for example um, this is the the one battery that I'm going to pull in. I'm going to drop it into import media. It's going to import the files here. I can start editing it um, without the proxies because they're not created yet. But what you'll see down here is it's going to automatically launch uh, the media encoder. And then if I pull up the media encoder, it's still launching. But um, uh, if you pull up the media encoder, you'll be able to see a progress bar of it creating the proxy. Um, Harsha, uh, video profile you shoot at. What do you, uh, tell me more, um, you talking about in, uh, in Premiere, are you talking about on the quad, um, also what camera are you talking about, are you talking about the split, split micro, here it is, so this is what the media encoder looks like, and it just unexpectedly quit, that's pretty awesome, way to go Adobe. So usually, if it doesn't unexpectedly quit, um, it'll pull up here, but see, it didn't unexpectedly quit. Um, if you miss that step, you can just right-click on the uh, video, or you can even select a whole bunch of them in here if you have a few, and then you just go to proxy and you go to create proxies, and that'll accomplish the same thing. Just leave this alone. I've never touched this, um, and okay, and it'll create a proxy job and it'll send that over to Media Player. Hey, there it goes, okay. So this is normally what it looks like. It, it's got the file here, and then here's your progress bar, and there's a little output preview. I should actually probably turn that output preview off, which should speed it up a little bit. Um, so while it's creating the proxies, like I said, we can still edit, we can still start doing work, uh, which is cool, but it's just not gonna run uh, on the quad cam. Ah, okay, um, so on from the video that you were just looking at that's a v1 uh, run cam split I run this at uh, the maximum um, uh, resolution is 1080 and you can do 60 frames or 30 frames I run 30 frames because that'll let the shutter speed come down a little bit farther for a little bit more motion blur um, and it is 16 by 9 um, on the Tarsier which goes up to 4k um, I'm doing 2.7K, 60 frames a second, because that's the smallest file size that will run the, um, oh yeah, thanks Supercell. Um, that's the smallest quality size that will uh, max out the bitrate, I believe. Um, so, yeah. There you go. Um, on my GoPro, I run all the settings that all the other... Uh, Pro Pilots run. Protune, lock the exposure, lock the ISO, uh, ND filters, all that good stuff. 
Um, so first thing I want to see, I don't have the proxies yet, but let me see how this is going to play. Let me see how this will play from the file. It's, it's not great. It's not that bad either. Um, well, let's just start cutting uh, the beginning of this guy up. Because it is going to be a one pack, like I said. <laughs> Come on. All right, here we go. All right, that's probably as good a spot as any. We're going to ripple delete because that'll pull this back over to the front. We're going to go to effects and we're going to put a video transition in. Um, I just, I keep it simple with my transitions. Simple dissolve. Um, I try not to use transitions as a crutch to have a fun video to watch. I would rather the footage kind of stand on its own and be the reason why you watched and enjoyed. Um, but that's just me. Nothing wrong with doing awesome transitions. I actually wish that I knew how to do them. It's something that I, that I do want to learn. Um, but with editing, there's plenty of other shit to learn. Uh, Ken Spachemin, or possibly Ken Spaceman, says, Still waiting for gear for all of it from Banggood. Didn't want the short-range SPIRX. Yeah. Uh, ordered the plug-and-play. Ah, I gotcha. Okay, okay. Still trying to educate yourself. Um, Ken, I gotta be honest, that's gonna be a tough soldering job. Um, there is information on soldering on the internet, um, on YouTube. Do your research um, and stay calm. I don't have a Discord uh, Mach 3D. Um, I just don't have the time um, it, to, to also monitor a Discord. So unless you guys really, really want me to do it, um, I will do it, but even if I do it, I won't have the time to spend, to be in there a lot. Um, the Facebook group that you get access to when you become a Patreon is where we've been kind of hanging out and bullshitting, um, instead of on Discord. Um, so if for whatever reason, uh, enough people would rather have Discord than that Facebook group, I'll think about doing it. Um, but in the interim, just use that Facebook group for a spot to chat with all the other patrons and post pictures and talk shit. Um, ooh, nice, Mars. Be good. Mars has a newbie drone. BB light. Very, very cool. I should probably not hold this up to the camera and make... Maybe Mars is gone already. Um, but I should probably not hold this up and make him jealous of my, uh, tester B-Brain, uh, brushless. That is amazing. Um, alright, so we got that cross dissolve. Let's see how that's going. Cool. I want to leave that left, right, front, back in because not enough people know about how to do that. Uh, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put an audio transition on just in case with a crossfade um, and just match that up with the, uh, with the video. Matching your audio with your video is very important. It's, it's something that is very easily overlooked, um, but it makes a huge difference. Uh, okay, so I'm also going to bring the volume down of the quad. Uh, I know from past experience that uh, going to like minus 20 dB is usually a good mix for leaving whatever song that gets chosen at full banana pants volume. Uh, I'm going to go into my liked songs here on, um, so the, the, the way that I, the, my sort of workflow, nice Mars, nice, um, my sort of workflow which with music selection, which is a big deal. Um, music selection takes hours for um, with each edit. Um, the way that I do it is I listen to Spotify as often as I can. I try to spend as much time in the made for you section. Um, there's these daily mixes, which just kind of um, guess at songs that are similar to what you already listened to. Um, and then I also use the discover weekly uh, as much as possible to just find new fresh stuff um, listen to it in the car, wherever, 
Uh, nice. Thanks, Mock. I appreciate that, man. I really do. Um, so use them as much as possible. When a song that I like comes on from here, I will hit like uh, or the little heart or, you know, whatever. Uh, that puts it into my liked songs. So I'm at a point now where I have, I think it's 400 and something of these liked songs. So for whatever reason, I thought it was one that might work for an edit. That dumps it in here. So now what I do is I just keep uh, Spotify on my other screen. I will put it onto shuffle and I will just hit play and I'll just let it run through randomly um, all of these songs that I've liked and I'll just leave that on the entire time that I'm editing and I'm just kind of subtly paying attention to if the pace of the song fits to the pace of my flying. Um, so we'll actually do that now and I'll just let this run because I want now well, let me pick a song that that somewhat fits. Oh wow, I was idling on the ground forever. Uh, let's fix this first. So I'm gonna pick the last frame that kinda looks the same, and I'm gonna cut there, and then I'm just gonna look as I scrub backwards to see if I move the quad at all. And if I didn't, I can make this look like I wasn't idling on the ground forever. So I think right about there, is where I'm going to cut it. So now for this entire piece, the the you know, so here's the beginning frame and here's the end frame. So it's the same, right? It was sitting uh, in the same exact spot. So I can now speed the shit out of this and you won't even notice it in theory. So let's speed it up to a thousand. Uh, maintain audio pitch and hit OK. And it drives me insane that it does this, but it's just a quick ripple delete. So now let's see if we can tell. If there were like birds flying by, if there were clouds or something, we'd be able to tell, but we don't have any clouds and I didn't see any birds, so uh, I'm just giving the audio a second to catch up here. The little red bar tells me it's working. Now let's just do it. Let's see what happens. See that? Can't even tell. Can't even tell that I was idling on the ground for that whole time. So we've got our little, make sure the props are on correct, front, back, left, right test, and then that just, boom, and then we just take off. Uh, this song is a little too gentle. I was flying pretty hard for this. So I'm going to look for something that's a little more upbeat. Uh, I'm also looking for something that kind of gets right into it. Uh, but let me check that real quick. Most people ditch after about a minute or 30 seconds. Um, so the first 30 seconds of your video has to be on. There, the, you, you gotta, you gotta grab somebody quick if you expect them to watch the whole thing, or if you just want a good quality product. So see how quick I really start flopping around. I want a song that's gonna kind of get, get to the point. Um, it is Spaceman, like in space. Nice, <laughs> very cool. Hey man, thank you. Thanks for hanging, uh, Ken get you some sleep because I think you said it's like midnight <laughs> and uh, I'll see you next time man uh, this song is not getting it done like I said I need something that gets right to it so I'm just gonna track forward on the songs and skip like 20 seconds in to find something that really ooh I've been wanting to use this one. Oh, this is gonna be a bad one pack shit I forgot that I did this I don't like that I crossed the road. Alright, so much for that. I can't have this as a uh, as a straight up one pack. It's going to have to have edits. Maybe I can just edit that little section out. Let's assume that I can just edit that little section out and we'll keep going. Alright, still looking for a song that gets going early. Let me do one better and I'll get a, uh, a time code from when that first big movement is. Because that's really where I want the song to be uh, coming to life. Oh, it's early. Jesus, that's only six seconds in. That's going to be tough. Most of these dance songs ramp up a little bit slower. See what I can find though. It's 
might actually work. I want to get to the color correction part of this as quickly as I can for you guys. Um, because that's what everybody always asks me about. Yeah, see, I have to edit this out. I can't be fucking... It was totally dead when I was doing this, but I, I don't want to put up something public that's got me doing that. That's... That's uncalled for. I mean, I shouldn't have been doing it in the first place. But, uh, you guys know how it is. Oh, wait. I can also cut the front off of some of these songs. Nah, that's for sure not going to do it. Ooh. I can cut the front off of this. Oh, now we're talking. Perturbator to the rescue. Oh, this might be it, guys. Um, the spot is not good enough. Not necessarily good enough, but the spot doesn't match the tone of this. This is a song for like a night flight or something, I think. Yeah, this is a great jam, but I'm going to save this jam. So, this is also not like a super polished, super edited video, so I don't necessarily want to use one of my like super amazing songs. I want to save those for something I'm going to pour more time into. Um, so, I'm not going to... I'm not going to... Uh, waste that song on a one pack I feel like I've used this song before but if I haven't this might be it this might be it fuck I hope I didn't use this song already did I? Bass Nectar, Arps of Revolution. Me too. I don't think you use this. So. Yeah, I think I'm safe. You're safe. Let's just see how it mixes a little bit more, though. Let's see here. Uh, Spudnik, to be honest with you, the color correction. True color correction, not just adding a LUT, um, actual color correction, which is what I'm going to show you guys, it doesn't matter what it's coming out of. It, it's just troubleshooting problems. Um, so doing it with this GoPro session footage is, is going to get you just as much knowledge as if I did it on uh, run cam split footage. Maybe even more because this is filmed in flat, flat colors. Um, which you have to push harder with the color correction. The run cam doesn't allow you to do that, so they've got a bunch of contrast and sharpness like pushed in that you can't get out of. And I'm going to do that manually here. What's up, kitten? I'm going to do that manually here. Um, let's see if this fits, though. I think it does. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good match. We're going to go with it because it's just a one battery edit. It's not something, again, that I'm going to pour a bunch of time into. Um, so let me grab this one. Over here on the second monitor. What do you guys think about this song? Does it match up? Can you even hear it? Is it loud enough? I 
And there's a uh, there's a remix of it in here uh, that I want to try on SoundCloud. Let's see how that is. Nah, I don't like it. All right, we're gonna go with the uh, the original version. Let me just grab it real quick. So the proxy should be done. You guys see how bad this is breaking up? Watch this. Turn the proxies on, stop it, and restart it. Watch what happens. And I can probably even increase the quality. I can probably even go full quality with it. It puts the stupid bars on the sides, but who cares? They don't, they don't come through when you export it. Yeah, look at that. Full quality version on the proxies. And, uh, and it's butter smooth. That's what the proxies do. If you're not using them, start. For sure, start. And if you're on like DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro, um, look up how to. Wow, there's a bunch of oscillation there. Um, look up. How, I'm sure that they that you can do proxies in those. I'm sure of it. Yeah, that quad was uh, making some noise. It might have been from banging into those trees a second ago. All right, so let's pull this in here. Oh, I gotta get the, uh, gotta get onto my project view. All right, let's pull the music in and get that on audio too. All right, back into it. Here we go. Uh, where'd the chat go? Hold on. I lost my chat. Where'd you guys go? There you are. Okay. Um, oh boy, I gotta turn this down. <laughs> Jesus, that would have been horrendous. Ah. All right, I'm gonna cut the front of this off. I'm gonna cut the front of this song off. I just gotta figure out where. Probably somewhere up here. Nah, that's where I'll cut it. That's yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, to do it, zoom in. Uh, in Premiere, hold Option down and roll your uh, your mouse wheel forward. That's going to zoom in and out. Uh, and what's nice about that is you can see. Oh, you son of a bitch! You can see the uh, the peaks in the audio, and then you can also shuttle through with your left and right arrows. So there's that first bunk of bunk 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 bunk. Right? So maybe I'll fade it in. All right, so check this out. I'm gonna cut it back a little bit. I'm gonna ripple delete. No, you can't ripple delete on audio, I forgot. Wait, yes you can. No, you can't. Um, we're gonna bring this all the way over. Zoom back in. Um, so I'm gonna cut it. I cut it a little bit farther back because I'm gonna try to sync up the first Bonk, 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 with, oh wow, it's almost there already, with the, with, uh, taking off. So it's pretty close. Uh, so what's hitting too early? The, is, the music is not hitting early enough, so I need to carve a little off the front. Let's take, uh, uh one third of a second off, see where that puts it. Yep. That's good, and let's fade it in, because now what you want to remember is we've got that that nonsense in the beginning from it uh, that we cut out, what we were thinking about cutting out. So let's see how this is. That'll work.
Yeah, that'll work. All right, so I'm gonna go right into the color correction part here, um, and I'll deal with cutting out the, the, the stupid shit that I was doing <laughs> during this battery, um, because that's really no fun to watch. So, uh, you can just click on the, um, click to highlight the, the piece of video that you wanna apply the corrections to, and you can just come up here to uh, Lumetri Color, and we're going to do all of our work here in basic correction and in creative. And creative is where you put the LUTs in. I don't use the LUTs because I want to... The, so what, what a LUT does is it's basically just a series of adjustments that work for a GoPro Session 5, a Hero 7. There's all different LUTs for each one of these. Um, and But what it doesn't factor in is anything else like the time of day that you're filming, the frame rate that you're filming in, what you have your, um, what you might have your auto, exp your, your exposure um, adjustment set to. You know, maybe you have it set to be a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. Um, there's a million variables that those LUTs don't take into consideration, and it's not all that hard to, to do your own color correction. Um, so you can certainly just apply it to the specific clip but if you start cutting that clip up, it, it can kind of be a pain in the ass. So here's a much better way of doing it. Uh, you pull your project up, you right click in like the nothing area, and you add a new item. And what you want to add is an adjustment layer. And the reason that I want to do this is because now I've got a layer here that I'm going to apply these corrections to that I can move around. So like if, I, if, if a part of my clip goes really dark, I can put a second adjustment layer and just brighten up that dark portion and then I can put another adjustment layer for the bright portion. It just gives you way more um, freedom and it also allows you to turn that layer on and off, to move that layer around. It's just a much better way of doing it. So um, always do it this way. There's literally no reason not to do it this way. Uh, in this case, since I'm trying to keep this quick, I'm just gonna apply this to the whole goddamn thing and all that means is dragging it to the full length. And all right, so now the next thing that I want to do, I try to pick a frame that, turn this down a little bit. I try to pick a still frame um, that has darks and that has lights. Hopefully the darkest darks and hopefully the lightest lights, uh, which I might have just kind of fallen into here. Um, so I've got the brightness, the brightest brights are going to be the sky looking into the sun, which I've got. And then the darkest darks here are the shadows in these trees. Um, the only problem with this frame is there's a lot of motion blur. Um, there's a point where I'm going to push uh, sharpening in. So let me see if I can find a frame where I'm not moving quite so much. That'll help me uh, tune the sharpening in. And that's probably going to be this big pat. Yeah, there we go. So that big overhead pass that I did, nice and slow. So we're looking right at the sun. That's as bright as bright is going to be. And then we've got these shadows over here in the trees. That's going to be my dark. So um, when you film on GoPro flat, this is what you get. It's a flat, uninteresting, kind of blah uh, image. But what's nice is, it. the whole point of it is that it didn't apply its own... Um, it didn't apply its own saturation adjustment, contrast adjustment. It, this is like what the sensor on the camera saw. And then we, with our human brains that work really well and that aren't tiny inside of a little fucking GoPro, we're going to use our big old human brains to make those adjustments. So that's what color correction really is. It's, it's just fixing all of these things. Brightness, exposure, contrast, saturation... Um, sharpening, all these good things. Um, and like I said, they are scene dependent. They're, they're very dependent upon the day, the time, the, uh, the settings, all these good things. So um, let's start improving. First thing, now the, the first thing is what's wrong with it? Like, what do I want to do to this to make this better? So, and, and that's what's hard. Um, I'm very lucky to have done photography for 10 plus years. Um, and in post-production on photography, it is these exact same adjustments. Uh, that's why I'm on Adobe Premiere, is so that I can have as much commonality to Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop, because those, those are what I've spent thousands of hours on uh, over the last decade plus. 
So what screams to me, the biggest problem with this, the biggest thing that makes this uninteresting is there's no contrast. So I know that I need to add contrast. Um, I also am kind of looking at the, the, how the brightest brights are and how the darkest darks are. I, I don't necessarily think I'm going to need to add any exposure. I maybe might take some away to get something back in the sky here. Um, I don't love this. This is just all blown out, so I know that I'm going to try to pull highlights down to get a little bit more detail in this sunset. Um, when I look into the darks here, I don't think I'm going to need to add shadows. I don't think I'm going to need to boost shadows um, because there is still some detail here in the darkest darks, but you see there's no true black. Um, the contrast isn't going to give me true black. Pulling the blacks down is going to do that. You'll see that. Um, that's pretty advanced. Um, I also need saturation. None of these colors are really popping. The contrast is going to help that, but everything is like pastel-y and everything is kind of muted, um, which is pretty normal when you shoot in flat. That's the point. Um, so those are the things that jump out of me. Now let's just start to attack them. Um, the way that Adobe sequences these items, top to bottom, is important, and it is the correct way that you want to work through these. So you want to adjust your temperature first, then your tint, then your exposure, then your contrast, then your highlights. The reason they've put these in this specific order is because most of these affect some of the other ones. And if you do them in this order, you have the best chance of not having to constantly go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. For example, when I get down here to the highlights, I might need to adjust the exposure from the adjustment that I make in the highlights. Um, but if this was the other way around, the highlights were first and then the exposure, I can guarantee you I would need to go back and adjust the highlights after adjusting the exposure. But this sequence that they have, there's a chance that by adjusting the exposure first, the, the adjustment that I make to the highlights will be fine and I won't have to go back and adjust the exposure. So always work top to bottom. Um, it's going to give you a much better result. So first thing I'm going to dial in is the temperature. Luckily I've got gray concrete, which is really nice. Um, gray concrete is going to serve as my gray board. So I'm actually able to take the eyedropper here and put it on the gray concrete to, to get an idea of where I want to go with the temperature and the tint. So this went a little too green. I don't like how green this is. Um, so I'm actually going to take some of that out here just to kind of equalize it. And to really see what these sliders are doing, go extreme. Go all the way to the extreme and you're like, oh, okay, so that when I move this to the left, it bumps a lot of the greens. When I move it to the right, it bumps a lot of the magentas. Um, so where it was, I just didn't quite like how green it was. My monitors are also um, uh, uh, um, tuned uh, with uh, one of the little fucking things that you hang on the monitor and tune the whites and, the, and everything. Um, so I can be fairly confident when I'm doing these. If your monitor is untuned, you're kind of taking a shot in the dark. I wouldn't necessarily recommend you go out and buy one of those tuners uh, unless you are doing heavy fo uh, you know, editing that is make you're making money from, essentially. Um, now, for the temperature, I should have done these in the other order. I should have done the temperature first, but the tint was just real bad, and I, and I wanted to fix the tint first. Now, for the temperature, um, it pushed it relatively cool. Um, it is afternoon... Uh, sunsetty. What I, what I'm going to look at as I move this around is what happens to the sunset. The sunset is very blown out, um, which is fairly common. Uh, I was this battery was a little late in the day. Uh, if I'd flown this a little bit earlier in the day, it wouldn't be quite so blown out. There'd be a little bit more even of a light on the ground versus in the sky, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to set this temperature as per what looks best in the sky. Um, so I think. That's going to be right around here. And that's down a fair whack. That's down by 21. That's a pretty aggressive adjustment. Let me make sure it doesn't look awkward. No, it looks good. That looks good. So that's, we can already start to see. So the other thing that's nice about the adjustment layer is you can just hit the eyeball here and turn it off. Um, or not. Why is it not turning off? What? Is it turning off and it's just subtle? Oh, it's being slow, isn't it? Let's see. Let's give it a second. Well, there's one way to tell. 
turn something all the way up and then hit the eyeball. No, it's not turning it off. What the f Why is it not? Ah, fuck me. Okay, that's why. So, I have the video track highlighted. So all the adjustments that I just made, I accidentally made them to the to the video track. I need to have the adjustment layer highlighted. So I'm going to reset these on the video layer, which is currently selected, and I'm going to select my adjustment layer, which is where I wanted them. Um, that's okay. So I think I had it around negative 20-ish, and then the tint is probably about right. Oh, and I have the, that layer toggled off, so those changes, are, there we go, now I can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna go until it's green, and then I'm just gonna pull it up towards the magenta, or the pink, and, okay, basically no adjustment. But there is a definite temperature adjustment that I made. Um, so now I can, there you go. So that's, there's the difference. It is subtle, um, but color correction is a whole bunch of subtle things that you're, that you're doing. Um, if you make big drastic changes, it's probably going to look like ass when you're done because all these things are going to stack on top of one another and you're going to end up with something look like, looking like an eight-year-old made these adjustments because there's going to be too much of everything. It's going to be too extreme. Um, so, yeah, lots of little subtle things are, are, are the name of the game with, with color correction. Um, so now we're going to go to the exposure, exposure, which is the next one down. Um, and there's no, like, eyedropper for this. This is just by eye. Um, so... When I pull it up, I get some more detail in the shadows. I do actually kind of look like the look of that in the shadows, but I, I don't have uh, much of the, the sunset in the frame here. So let me just back up a little bit. All right, this is better. So let's see what happens to the top of the frame here when I move this exposure up. So, and what I'm looking for is the detail to go away. So look, look right here. There's a, there's a definite um, change in uh, well, there, so this is 100% white. This is full-blown. I have no detail here whatsoever. Over here, we have some detail in these clouds. Um, so watch what happens in this general area here as I move this exposure up and down. So when I move it up, there's going to be a point where I start to lose those clouds. And see how those clouds are now gone? I've lost them. Watch when I move it down. Those clouds will come back. But what also happens is you start to develop a line. Um, so you want to avoid that because that starts to look unnatural. So let's move it back up a little bit. And I think right around there, which is basically zeroed out. See, it just starts to look ugly when I, when I bring the exposure down. But when I boost the exposure up, um, it starts to blow out some of the details that I have in the sky. And now the highlight adjustment is going to start to get them back. But we want to get the exposure... Um, as close as we can across the whole scene because that's what the exposure is adjusting. It's adjusting everything. So I bumped it up a little bit because that makes the trees look a little bit better. Um, I'm going to leave it there and if I need to come back to it and pull it back down, I can do that. Um, stream looks like it's still working. That's a good thing. All right. Next, we're going to adjust the contrast uh, and we're just going to push a whole bunch of this in because it really needs it. And now the contrast is also going to affect these. You're going to see this um, start to change, but primarily the contrast slider only adjusts the mid-tones. It doesn't adjust the extremes all that much. This is considered an extreme because it's pure white, and these dark uh, black, you know, blackest black shadows are considered the other extreme. So the contrast isn't really going to affect those. It's only going to affect these mid-tones. So this is where we want to focus on when we adjust the contrast, because these are all the mid-tones. But we do want to keep an eye on this up here, because we could lose a bunch of this. Like I said, we're going to gain it back with the highlights adjustment, but we don't want to go too extreme with the contrast. So we're going to move it, move it, move it. The mid-tones on the bottom starting to look better, looking more interesting, looking more interesting. When we go all the way up, we've gone too far. This is a bit too much. We, we start to lose some of these shadows in here. Uh, all right, Harsha says, should we exposure lock to prevent blown out highlights in GoPro? But FPV videos are very dynamic, moving con continuously. So how can, we, how can the exposure locking prevent losing details in the dark? Fantastic question, um, Harsha. 
it is a very delicate dance. Um, the most important thing is the time of day that you're flying and how extreme, and, and the reason why that is important is that will uh, determine how extreme the brightest brights are and how extreme the darkest darks, darks are. Um, I was flying a little bit too late in the day here, so what happened is the sky went too bright. The sun dropped below the horizon, so now the entire sky is one big-ass white softbox, and there's not a ton of light falling on the ground. Um, so the ground will go really dark. So in this scene here that I was flying, locking the exposure would have been really tough because I would have either had to pick where the ground was exposed properly and the sky was totally blown out or the sky is exposed properly and the ground is all black. Um, so this is an example, flying late in the day like this, this is an example where I would not lock the shutter, uh, lock the aperture rather. Um, if I'd caught this during proper golden hour where the sun was still in the sky, there would have been direct sunlight hitting the ground and lighting the ground up more. So the the um, right now, this scene, there is a huge variance between the darkest darks and the lightest lights. And not having the exposure locked helped that out because when I drop down, you'll see it brighten those darks up, and that's what I want. Um, but you want to try to fly during golden hour, and in golden hour, you can... Point the, uh, point the camera at a scene that has the ground in the sky and set your exposure and lock it down. Uh, and that'll give you better results. But during the middle of the day when there's like bright, harsh sunlight and really harsh shadows uh, or after golden hour, you don't want your aperture locked um, because of exactly what you said. Because, um, well, because of what we both said. Because, of, you know, I explained how the, the brightest brights are very bright and the darkest darks are very dark. Um, and the fact that we are moving very dynamically. We're going to go into dark shadows in the trees, and then we're going to jump up here, and half the frame is going to be the sky. Um, so really, really good, um, thoughtful um, comment there. I appreciate you asking that. Uh, so now we've got contrast all the way up, which is a little bit too much. Let's start backing it off, and you can see what happens as we back it off. We pick up some light here, uh, but we just lose interest. It starts to get gray and boring again. So... Um, Typically on Pro Tune, my contrast is going to be up here in this range um, because I do want to push a bunch in because it makes the midtones much more interesting. Um, but you just don't want to go too far where you have to do a lot of work on the next two values to gain back your the the, the highlights and the shadows. So let's leave it up there at 72. Um, don't I, I'm going to stop. I hope you guys can't see these numbers because these numbers don't matter. You need to, the numbers mean nothing. You can't put 72 into yours and have it look good. You have to go through what I'm going through. Move it up, see how it looks. Move it down, see how it looks. Look for the problem areas. See if it's interesting, see if it's not interesting. Um, that's proper color correction. You're troubleshooting a problem. Um, and you have to do that phase by phase. So now the highlights, this is going to be just targeting the sky because the sky is where the highlights are. So you can see if I bump those all the way up, the sky goes nuclear. If I bump them all the way down, the sky comes down a lot. And that actually looks pretty damn good. See how it pulled those blues out of the sky and it pulled those clouds in? Usually when you pull the, the highlights down this far, it really starts to look bad. So here's the problem with pulling the highlights down really far. Over here on the roof, this is a mid-tone, but we've moved the highlight slider so far that it's starting to affect that mid-tone. And that's a scenario where we will bump back into the exposure and we'll add exposure to get those mid-tones back. Um, so with this highlight slider, we want to just focus on the highlights, but we don't want to throw out the rest of the scene. Um, so I don't necessarily want to go negative 100. I want to just bump up a little bit, um, just a little bit. And you can see that roof kind of lightened up. So we ended up basically minus 80. Um, now we're going to go to shadows. And now for the shadows, we're going to look down here, specifically at the darkest darks in the shadows of the trees. So let's start pushing the shadows up to try to gain those back. Well, I'll go all the way so you can see. So there's the drastic example of what it does when it's all the way up. And they're all the way down. That's the best way to see what it's doing. And, and you can see up in the top left and right corners, yeah, it's affecting that, but not much. You want to look at and adjust the areas that it's affecting the most, which I think you guys can pretty easily see are these trees here on the left that we were just talking about, because that's where the darkest darks are. 
Um, so there's in the middle. We're going to bump it up a little bit. Uh, that's about halfway. When we go all the way, it's just way too much. Looking up in the sky to see where there's the least loss in the sky, and I think that's right about there. So plus 40, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty strong adjustment there. Now, next two are whites and blacks. This adjusts the very ends of the whites and the blacks. So now, what this is going to affect is right in the middle here. This is 100% white, full, you know, this, it's where the most light is coming from. Um, and then the blacks are going to adjust the very bottom of the blacks here. And what you're trying to do with these two is you're trying to make sure that you have 100% white somewhere and 100% black somewhere. So, for example, if I boost this white all the way up, it's going to crush the sky. But the main thing it's going to crush is the middle of the sky because that's where it's pretty much 100% white. If I pull it all the way down, you can really see what it's doing. It's taking that 100% white and it's just dumping it down. And it just looks like ass when you do that. You almost always want to move the whites up a little bit because when you when you pull the highlights down, you start pulling those 100% those whites all the way down. But the proper way to tune this is to look for the spot in the scene that you would think would be, that you, you want to be 100% white and you want to see that spot not change. So like I start pushing this up and that's basically dead center here where the sun is. And when I move it down, you see how it's changing? It might be hard through the stream, but as I move this down, that 100% white does change. And we don't want that. We want it to be 100%. So whatever the value is where that whitest white stays the same, you want to be towards the bottom of that value. And I think that's right around here. It's going to be very hard for you guys to see that through the stream because it's just obliterating the quality. Um, but this is the best I can do. Here, I can make this a little bit bigger for you guys by pulling that down. That's interesting. All right. Uh, so now we're going to adjust the blacks. We're probably not going to have to touch the blacks because I can already see in here that that's pretty much true black, but we'll go through the same exercise. We'll move it all the way down, all the way up. Uh, and you can see when I moved it all the way up, all those hundred, you know, blackest black in the scene, that's now gray and horrible looking. Um, so be careful with the black slider. If you pull this down too much, It'll look good in this um, in a still image like this, but when there's motion, it can look really bad. So just be very gentle with this blacks adjustment. Um, it only usually needs a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna just do negative like two, negative two, negative three. Um, so I don't so, because again the blacks weren't the problem. The 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 lights were the problem. So we push the whites and the highlights harder than we push the blacks. Um, so there we go. There's the top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sliders that make the majority of the difference. We'll look at a before and an after. Again, it's subtle. We want to correct problems. This is the before. We've got something that's not color balanced right. There's really no whites in here. It's just kind of like dingy colored. It's kind of gray. There's not a lot of contrast. And then when we turn this on, we get our contrast back. We get white whites. We get some actual blues in here. Um, I think I do want, uh, so I will spend a lot of time flicking back and forth, just kind of looking at different parts of the image, look at the roof, see what happens to the roof, look at the trees, see what happens there. Um, these mid-tones here are not really like popping as much as I want them to, so I'm going to push a little bit more contrast in. Um, I might even push a little bit of exposure in. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit more exposure. That's kind of working, and it's still not killing the sky. I don't think. Let's see. Before, oh yeah, it is killing the sky. Um, all right, I'm gonna back that exposure off because that really affected the sky in a way that I didn't want it to. Um, so now we got the the corners of the sky back. That's good. Keep flipping back and forth. Um. Let's see what, man, the sky is really nuclear. So the whites are not affecting that. It's, and a lot of this stuff is compromises. Um, you do, there are situations where you just won't be able to get it perfect, and that's okay. I'm actually going to run this highlight slider all the way down. Full beans, negative 100. Um, don't adjust your saturation here. You're going to adjust it in creative. These are the only ones that you want to do in the basic correction. 
Um, and if for some reason you want to put a pre-cooked LUT in, here's where you do it. Um, but like I said, I am not a fan. So now we're going to go into creative, and this is where we're really going to get some 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 interest um, into the scene. Basically, in the basic, we're correcting problems, and now we're making it look more interesting. Um, there are a whole bunch of looks that you can use. Um, I use these looks as like inspiration more than anything else. Um, every single one of these looks is just basically a combination of these faded film, sharpen, vibrance, and, and saturation. Um, <clears throat> but it's they're really cool uh, to just kind of give yourself ideas for, for this particular day, you know, piece of film, whatever you want to call it. Um, so let's come down here. To, to go through these quickly, uh, put your, your left hand on your up and down arrows and your right uh, mouse pointer over the look, and you're going to click, down arrow, and return. Like your, your pinky can hit return and your, like, your index finger can hit the down arrow. Um, and it just lets you flip through these quickly to see if there's one that, because there's a million, to see if there's one that kind of jumps out at you. So here's a really good example, right? Oops. Fuck me. Hold up. There we go. Okay. Uh, so... You see the sky? It's totally blown out. I go to one one look above it, and I got my sky back. Um, because the looks are also adjusting the um, the exposure and whatnot. I forgot about that. Um, again, just giving yourself ideas. You're just trying to get ideas with, with doing this. Um, as to some color corrections that might look gnarly. You know, maybe a blue filter makes uh, this the roof of the building really pop. God damn it, I keep hitting... The down arrow goes to... Um, the... Uh, the previous... Yeah, see, that's got a bunch of green in it. Maybe on whatever you're working on, that green makes it look really cool. Um, again, I just use it as kind of inspiration. I don't typically use these, but if one is really looking good... I'll, I might use it. I just turn the intensity way down on it. These, uh, the, the, the hundred intensity is like a lot on the majority of these. Just seeing if anything is super interesting. Oh, that was kind of cool. It's got some purple in it. That's kind of neat. That really brings out the, uh, the blues of the skies. Uh, what's that? SL neutral start. So... And then with the intensity, we can turn it off and we can add it in slowly. So with it off, it's okay looking. We add it in a little bit. You can turn it all the way on and see what it would look like if it's there's way too much of it. So I kind of like this one. I, I kind of dig what this is doing. So I'm going to leave it on. I'm going to pull the intensity up just a little bit here. Uh, I think that's about where I want it. Okay, so now to the real adjustments. Um, these are what, what you want to spend most of your time on. Sharpening is tough. Um, but typically if you, you want to set your GoPro on and anything, anything that's collecting HD footage, you want to set that on low sharpening, the lowest possible sharpening or no sharpening, um, because you want to be able to manually do that here. So it's, but it's very, uh, it's very sensitive. And what you're looking for is like the aliasing and the jaggies. Uh, so like I'm looking here because this is a diagonal. So as I increase the sharpness, there's going to be a point where it just starts looking like ass, and that's happening pretty quick here. Um, so I'm not going to be able to add much sharpening. Uh, I'm going to keep backing it off until I see that garbage go away, and I think it's right about there. So yeah, I was only, at, only able to add three. That's pretty normal. Uh, vibrance and saturation is where this is really going to um, come alive. So if you put the vibrance all the way up, you can see what the vibrance is doing. It's it's attacking blues and purples and uh, not doing much to the greens on the left side there. Uh, and there's a bunch of blues and purples in the background there in blocky horribleness. Um, and it's also affecting the yellow. Look at the yellow on the horizon in the sky. It's also affecting that. So 100 is obviously way too much, but you can be pretty aggressive with the vibrance here. So let's go up quite a bit. Um, if you go up too much, it's going to make those blockies, uh, the, those blocks and that garbage way more noticeable. 
um, that's a bitrate problem. The the Hero 8 has an option to go 100 bitrate that I'm really excited about. It's a shame that the lens isn't replaceable though. But they say the lens is way stronger, so maybe the lens it doesn't need to be replaceable because it won't break. So I'm going to leave the vibrance there. That's a lot. Um, I'm actually going to back it off a little bit because we're about to add saturation. I'll back it off to 50. Um, saturation stacks on top of the vibrance, but it affects different colors. And again, if you put it all the way up, you're going to see the different colors that it affects. Mainly it's the green. On the left side here in the trees, you can see the saturation is, is affecting those. It's also affecting the uh, yellow. Technically, it's affecting everything, which you can tell by turning it all the way down. When we turn the saturation all the way down, you get black and white. Um, so, yeah, saturation is kind of doing everything. An oversaturated edit, we've all seen. Um, the the um, A lot of these... Runcam and Foxeer and Cadex cameras have way too much saturation pushed in them um, from the factory because that makes it poppy and exciting and um, but it also looks like ass. <laughs> so uh, be gentle with the saturation. Uh, I'm gonna maybe go up here to like 20s or so. Yeah, because it brings those trees in nice. So I I'm at like 130 or so. So that's looking pretty good. Um, that's where I'm going to stop. There is a lot more than you can do, um, but I don't really have a great feel for it quite yet. Um, I'm learning more and more and more about Premiere, uh, but I'm just not quite there where I can confidently talk about the rest of this. Plus, the rest of this really gets in the weeds. You start getting into curves, um, you know, red, green, blue curves and hue saturation curves. God damn it, you can spend hours on this stuff. Um, and I would rather spend less time on this stuff and just go out and fly a little bit more. Maybe I'll add a little vignette. Eh, just a little tiny one. Just to soften up the corners a little bit more. Um, and that's it. So that's my color correction. Here's the before and after. You can really see that those saturation and, um, uh, what do these idiots call the other one? Vibrance. Um, you can really see the difference that those two made. It was subtle, and now it's just kind of dialed in. And and again, I didn't go nuts. I mean, we can we can always push it more, um, but I I keep it kind of tame on the first go around here, and then I watch it back because you know I'm just doing this from one still. Once I dive down in the trees and it starts to adjust. Um, you know, it, it, it could look like a total bag of shit. And at that point, you can certainly make another adjustment layer that just works for the trees and drop that in. Uh, but I'm not trying to spend that kind of time. I'm trying to just do one adjustment layer fits it all. So let's take a look. This is essentially pretty much done. Uh, we're on the proxies and we're full quality. Let's see how Premiere does. Oh, that's neat. Oh wow, I can't handle it. So when when you put this adjustment layer in, uh, it has Premiere has a lot more work to do. Um, so it is not like in full quality, even on the proxies. It's not even like in half. Let's go down to quarter. That's better. What just happened there though? Oh, so okay. So I think I didn't pull the adjustment layer back far enough. Oh no, that's not what it is. It's that I uh, I was applying those adjustments to the to the wrong thing. I got to remove the adjustments. Ah. I was doing all of that with temperature and tint pushed in from that screw up. I'm gonna need to adjust the temperature and tint a little bit. Uh, let's just reset it, and that'll zero it out. So I was I was adjusting on top of adjustments that were already there. Um, so, but the only adjustments were the temperature and tint from that screw up. So let's just fix that real quick. Um, where's that overhead at? Come on. Oh wait, it's way over here. There we go. That'll work. Um, now nah, let me rotate it around. I want the building in there as well. There we go. Okay. So let's, let's fix the temperature and the tint. Um, first, let me th let me see what it thinks it should be. Wow, yeah. See, and the, the eyedropper doesn't already always work. You want with the eyedropper, you want to pick somewhere that's neutral. So you want white or you want gray. 
Um, and what it's trying to do with a gray is, it's, man, it is having a real hard time. Yeah, all right, so I can't use it. That's fine. It's better to do it manually anyway. Uh, so let's go a little blue. It's, it's looking a little too warm, a little too orange. Um, so let's go blue. Cool it down a little bit. It, and it is late in the day, so that does make sense. Later in the day uh, is called blue hour for a reason. So um, a lot of my style of, of color correction and just post-production and editing is more of an editorial style where I'm trying to make it look like the day. Um, I'm not usually in if if the footage is screwed up if there's something majorly wrong i might go ballistic to try to salvage it and make it look crazy and yellows where purples are supposed to be and shit like that but most of the time if the footage is half decent i'm just trying to make it more look like what my eyes saw on that day so this was blue hour i'm going to push a little bit more blue than i normally would um and that's going to bring the skies out really nice um now let's get the tint dialed in so that's going to be too green, that's too pink, we want to go right in the middle. And I tend to go more pink than green here, more magenta than green, um, just because I like the look of it. I don't like a green tint, it looks like a bad horror movie, um, in my opinion. So almost no tint adjustment, and now we're back where I wanted to be. So now we're good to go, um, and I applied those to the adjustment layer. There we go. All right, so let's see if this thing, let me uh, close the OBS window. Let's see if this nine-year-old Mac computer can handle playing this big with the adjustment filter on. And we'll see how it, adjust, it affects the rest of the uh, footage. Might actually be a bit much. Might be a little bit too contrasty for me. I'm probably going to take a little bit of that vibrance out, I think. Okay, so here is an example of when you get the black slider too low. All right, see how we're starting to get some garbage in here? There was, there was like a frame that really showed it. It's one of the problems with video. This is one of the reasons I really love shooting stills is you just make the adjustments and you're done. Now, this is fine. The, if, if the black slider was too low, it would just start to look like ass in the transition between true blacks and anything but true black. Um, but I, like, it, would, it just kind of gets grainy and just looks like shit. Um, I am like right on the line where it's, it might start to do that. Um, but let's just keep going and, and see if it kind of jumps out at us as bad anywhere else. past this bullshit. Yeah, there's too much vibrance. It's making everything too purple. That's a little better. Woo this is actually a more aggressive... Um, this is more aggressive than I thought. This is... I pushed this pretty far. And the, the, the shittier the footage is, the harder it is to make it look good and natural at the same time in fairness. Um, and like I said, this is too late in the day to be flying. The brights are too bright and the darks are too dark, so I'll never be able to get this totally perfect, but I can at least salvage it um, somewhat. 
this isn't bad, it's... Still a little too purple. But I might actually leave it. Yeah, I played with that wire later. I made like a mental note with that wire to go play around with them, because there's two of them. This will be slick once this is synced up to the, uh, to the music. Yeah, this is all right. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of exposure too, um, because this, the mid-tones here, are just a little bit too dark. All right, cool. So that's pretty good. Um, let me add a little bit of exposure. Uh, I really noticed it towards the end here. Yeah, see that's a little too dark. Let's just go up ever so slightly to just kind of bring that back to life. Yeah, it's a little better. Yeah, um, I... I could push a little bit of those purples into blue, but still not super confident how to do it here in the hue saturation luminance secondary. Um, so I'll just skip it uh, because it doesn't look bad. And I can, you know what, I can do that by just doing this. I can just pull some of this magenta out here because that's what's adding to the purple. Um, and then I can just push a tiny little bit more blue in here. So that should have killed, yeah, see that shifted those purples more blue, so it looks a little more natural. Of course I have something on the lens, god damn it. And this isn't the battery that I thought it was, actually. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so I guess this won't be a one battery edit. Or maybe it will be if I find that right battery. I copied the wrong one from the, uh, the folder, that's annoying. Um, so there you go. There's color correction. There's your befores and afters. Um, I'm going to shut this mother... Is it really 6 o'clock? What the hell? Oh my god. Okay, I'm going to shut this thing down. Um, everybody that's stuck with me, you guys are awesome. Even the people that bailed are still awesome, just not quite as awesome as everybody that, uh, that hung out here. Let me show you guys. Here's your, here's your present for staying. Let me find that fire battery, and I'm going to play it for you guys. Because um, it was interesting. So it was in a folder called Untitled. I, like, completely forgot about it, and I think it was over here. Eh, where the hell was it? It was a, a file called... Un oh, there it is. Untitled folder. It's sitting on my desktop. Um... Okay, so it was towards the end of the day. Hold up, guys. Let me just find it real quick. It'll be worth it, I promise. No, that's the next day. That's the next day. That's the next day. Come on, where are you? Where are you? That's not it. That's not it either. Uh, it must be at the end of this folder. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, so I copied 4305. I think it was maybe 4306. Let's see if I recognize any of this. I think this is it. Pretty sure this is it. Yep, this is the one. I remember that. Um, yeah, because here's where I was playing with those wires. And I played with them a couple times. Uh, 
Oh, no, this isn't the one. This isn't the one. Is it the very last one? No, it was like damn near dark in the last one. No, was it 04? There it is. This is it. This is the one I meant to copy over. Uh, 4304. God damn it. Okay, so, well, this is cool. Look what I can do. This is one of the things I love about Premiere. <clears throat> I'm going to grab 4304, and I'm just going to pull it in here. This is also why the adjustment layer is amazing. So I've got the, the right clip now, um, so I can literally just take it and drop it in uh, with the adjustment layer. All right, hold on. There's a little, i got to bring that down there. Um, with the adjustment layer, and since it was like the very next battery, um, the adjustment layer should be pretty damn good, pretty damn close. Let me move this out of the way first. And let's just do this super quick like effects. Uh, we're going to do a quick cross dissolve on the beginning there. We're going to make it a little bit longer. Add an extra whatever. Um, and I gotta just chop the beginning down again. Oh man, she's struggling. Computer's struggling. Come on. Media player is also up tr uh, creating the proxy, which is the main reason why it's. Uh, it's struggling so bad right now. But, there we go. So there's... Alright, here's right before I launched. Ah, there we go. Okay. Oh, it's bad. It's so bad. Alright. Roughly there. Ah, idiot. Okay, so... Um... Oh, yeah, right. Um, there's a better way to do this. Here's a better way to do this. You shorten this up, you pull it back, and then you look for that launch to be on that first moment. See, it's a little late, so I'm going to cut more off and scooch it back over. Nope. I gotta cut a bunch off. I'll cut a full second off. That's probably gonna be too much. Oh, oh, I'll put it on that flip. That'll be cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. The old gap it flip cut. Ah, come on. Come on, computer. Play it smooth so I can see what the hell's happening. No, nope, still late. That should be perfect. All right, come on. Let's go all the way down to one eighth quality. Now it's too early. God damn it! All right, so sixteen was too much. So let's take ten, and that should be it. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to take a tiny little bit more because YouTube does fuck the sync up a little bit. Um, so you always want the video to chase the audio. You want the video to be late, not the video to be early. You lose all impact when the video is too early. Oh man, it's way too early. That was weird. Close enough. Let's see how it is. Oh wait, so the adjustment layer is off, boom. And it's not quite perfect, because the sun changed. It's a little too... Now it's a little bit too blue. So let's go in here, and we're going to take a little bit of the blue away. 
And now we're back. It's also a little bit too bright. So we're going to fix that. All right, but here you go. This will be a one battery. This is this is like the best I've flown, maybe ever. Ugh. Yeah, you can house blog, but man, is that a lot of time. I had to get back through those wires one more time, <laughs> just to prove it wasn't a fluke. <laughs> Look at this though, man, I got fucking spicy up in these trees. That's where that smudge on the on the lens came from. <laughs> That's funny. That's the only little spot that I'm not happy with. I almost hit that sign and I had a moment of like, because <gasps> I hit signs a lot. Look at this. This is a great little section too. Woo! -hoo -hoo, what you know about that? <laughs> uh, I tried to get I wanted to get through those stalled out just uh, just floating I forgot there was a crash in here shit all right so I guess this won't be a one battery because of the crash but I got some good stuff from that uh, from that other battery that'll be fun in there so there it is shutting this thing down thanks for coming everybody um, hit the description for the link to my patreon um, and those uh, affiliate links hit see if you can use them I'm, uh, I'm interested in what happens I uh, I need to learn about that for sure um, I think that's about it. I'll be on again tomorrow night at 10 o'clock Eastern. Um, you guys rule as always. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on Patreon. Later, everybody. Why am I saying goodbye? OBS is like mysteriously vanished. There it is. Okay. For real this time. See you later.